Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, Fridays with ICH 98 and today we have uh, another lecture. And this is kind of different from the uh, previous two games we've gone over. Uh, the, in the first one we went we went over um, Loshigo 9 Down Professional versus uh, Tri Chohan. And uh, in the second game we looked at Tri Chohan versus Lisa Dole. That was also very intense. There were six major co-fights. So that was some that was some crazy shit right there. Um, so today, however, we're gonna look at something different, um, rather classic actually, because I I took this game from uh, a very classic Jubango between uh, Shi Xiangxia and Fan Xiping. So both of them are really like strong. Um, this goes back to the Qing Dynasty in China when uh, they're both like the strongest players ever I mean like at, at least uh, in their era right uh, this was about three two hundred years ago um, there were no group studies there were no more modern Josekis um, but it was none was very entertaining because the ancient Chinese liked playing games uh, in a very violent way so usually, uh, I want to just oh, here's my mouse. So to begin with, you start with four uh, stones. Is there about nine pieces and nine? Uh, just like nine professional. We actually like back then. We we uh we have no idea uh what rank they were because this was in the Qing Dynasty, right? This was in uh the nineteenth. 18th, 18th century or something. I don't remember the exact date, but uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a long time ago. And let's see what we'll. Uh, uh, what people said about me in this chat. Anyway, they're talk they're talking about me getting beaten twice in a row. <sighs> so yeah, very strong games. Kevin Z D, how are how are you on the stream? If you haven't uh, followed, um, uh, would you consider following me to get so I can feel better because I just lost like two, two twice in a row to a sandbagger. So, uh, usually white starts first. Uh, I tried to do a stream go once, but I thought I told me I couldn't because it was in the game. How do you end up? Um, you just have to set like a go category. We'll talk about that later. So, uh, in this game, uh, Fan Xiping was white and uh, Shi Jiangxiang was black, right? So, both of them are, are very strong. And. Let's go ahead and start the game. To begin with, the traditional openings are uh, very like orthodox. So in in ancient China, uh, it was uh, it was basically verbatim, right? So we start with like an uh, an approach, and then uh, black starts with kind of a splitting move here. So both of them. Know this very well because they're very strong players. Fan Xiping and Shi Jiangxia uh, studied Go in the, uh, under the same teacher, so they grew up together. They're uh, uh, they're from the same town, I believe, and so I um, from what I learned, I'm just I'm just, gonna, I'm just like uh, I'm getting distracted by the chat right now. Um, wait, what was I? <laughs> So yeah, they were they're in the same town, and when they grew up, there was gonna be uh, a surefire rivalry because uh, they're both very strong, right? And they, they, there was much anticipation for Jubango between them. So uh, this was under the suge su suggestion of a really strong, not not strong, but a really rich person. 
this person is a kind of a landlord, sort of. And uh, so, th so this was really the precedent of Guli uh, Visado Jibango, right? Because back then they weren't really playing for money, or maybe, or maybe they were, because the landlord was sponsoring them, technically, right? But um, they're really just playing for fun. And for example, this move we don't see a lot nowadays. Like I think the modern player would rather just look at something like O seventeen. Then maybe play this. But I think the conception back then was very different. Because uh, if you split here, you kind of have uh, both A and B possible. So like, you can extend either way. And uh, it was believed that this was really good. right? Uh, the Chinese like to leave themselves options on the board. So white play here, but black doesn't want to uh, make this overly concentrated either because that will be spending too much on the right side. So uh, white approaches. No, I'm sorry, black approaches. Uh, no white splits again. So this is almost like a uh, like standard. Opening. Warren Bahari doing. Uh... So yeah, for for black, this is an interesting enclosure because we don't really see this nowadays. Uh, more often, I think we see more of like O seventeen. This just invites the possibility of a uh, an approach. They just get was that text, All right? So yeah, you, as you can see, the modern notion and uh, the ancient ideas of what Go should be is completely different. So uh, if you look at this, right? So this is all a uh, black and white we're doing, trying to like kind of spread as many groups as possible and then fight. So it's kind of like a balance, right, on the board. Like for example, black can also play here uh, to attack this white stone, but white will probably play some somewhere else here. So uh, it's usually a bad thing, uh, the ancient Chinese say, to leave like two weak groups that is like on each side. Would you, would you say the move is worse than nice move to make enclosure? I think it's unfair to say that because uh, that was not what people thought at that time. They probably put a lot of mirror go. I think this is pretty symmetric though. It's it's kind of beautiful, right? If you look at this, it's it's almost like completely symmetric. Except uh, I mean if you play here, this would be a completely symmetric, right? I just showed the move in the game which is, was to jump out, but uh, if you play here, this would be like mirror go. So in the game though, Black jumped out, uh, hoping to kind of save this stone and uh, also attack white at the same time, right? But white plays here first, just to settle. Black now has a, a, a weak group here and a slightly weak uh, group over there. But it's not so bad because Black already has like a stone jumping out towards that direction. So Black is the place here. Uh, makes a weaker route of white. 
Now white jumps out. Black can just uh, take the outside, which is a very popular uh, Joseki by then. So even though this seems to have given uh, white a lot of corner territory, uh, so if white blocks, right, black can take the outside, which is very big. If white wants to really defend against the corner and prevent anything like R3, You can do that. But th this is difficult, right? Because black already has a very nice outside, and uh, white now has a weak stone here. So this is going to be very difficult for white. In the game though, this strategy developed by uh, both of them, actually uh, more by Fan Shiping, I think, uh, was to really attack this while saving that. So now we see a fighting pattern, right? So white uh, leans at uh, p6, black pushes, and white takes the corner. So black no harness. White blocks, so pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, black can also uh, just extend at O2. White can take the corner, but now you have the Aji at R3. The bright side for white is uh, if white gets over this corner, this is of course greater than in this situation, right? If black connects, that's a smaller corner. Is that like a like a pro? I'm not a pro. Otherwise, why would why would I have gotten like beaten like that? I think I was just trying to play entertaining stuff. Why did I fire on me? <laughs> anyway. So black connects. And uh, so the, the, the ancient Chinese are really aggressive in the way they go about Go, right? Because um, they liked combat. They really, th they really thought that you know, it, it was a fun thing. And this was what Go should be. And, and that's kind of mind boggling is before I uh, like review this game, I, I didn't know that. Uh, this kind of like ties into Chinese philosophy a little bit because the spirit of um, how does how does call it like moderation is very important because you already have like stones all over the board and now uh, after that you start the fighting right so now. People might ask, but so by the way, um, if you have questions, um, please let me know. Uh, just like uh, say in the Twitch chat, because uh, I want I really do want to make this a discussion, uh, and I want you guys to get involved. Also, if you're new, please feel free to uh, follow and subscribe. Uh, what are people saying, actually? So, uh, we're going back here. So you might ask, why does black not push, right? What year is this game again? 
Uh, let me look this up, actually. This was played in the 18th century, I think. Uh, when was the date of this game? Uh, this is here. Oh, this is in this is in 1739. This is in 1739. That's a that's a good question though. I actually just looked into it. The vintage Jubango, right? So you might ask, why does Black not push here? The answer to that is, uh, if the Atari's, and then why just connects? There's not much you can do. The reason for that is, if Black just extends, now Y can cut. So this is very difficult now because uh, if Black Atari's, Y can just extend, All right? So the la the ladder actually doesn't work. In that case, uh, Black's in deep trouble. And if Black just fixes the weakness, Y can just like extend, right? And if Black now extends, he is already like behind because Y just got sentate locally, right? So you know, even though it seems like pushing is a good idea, it really isn't. What this is what you're hoping for, right? If white just uh it pulls back, then you can exploit the weakness here. But yeah, what can this block? Which is why uh black just played Hane. When it extends, black keeps pushing. Now there's a there's a lot of algae inside white's corner, right? Because of this. Like you have a lot of there's a lot of things you can do. So in the game, uh, White could have played at O nine, but uh, I I think uh, Fun was worried about uh, the efficiency of the stones because if White just caps right now. He uh he thinks that this stone here is over already concentrated. Until which year ago had the four star points occupied in the beginning? I'm not sure. I think it's after the fall of the Qing Dynasty. This is this is in China, right? Not not in Japan. In Japan, they didn't have uh presets. <laughs> It's kind of like Sanjo Baduk. Uh, back then, there were like uh, presets in Korean Go as well, right? So it's an interesting idea because uh, he thinks that this stone should be here. So instead of this, uh, probably play some, something like that. If you have a stone uh, at P14, it is indeed more efficient because now you are enclosing a much larger area. Right. So in the game, he played the Hane, which is even more aggressive because now you have more cutting points. Just to clarify, over concentrate doesn't mean locally bad. It just means that you can get what you got efficiently. Yeah, it it is not it is not necessarily bad. It could be bad. If, it could be bad if you're too concentrated. But uh, like pros, top pros, like uh, these two guys, right? Back in back in those days, they really wanted to focus on efficiency. So uh, they just wanted to make the stuff, the, their cells work as well as they could, right? So black play the clan, right? So this is, this starts everything, white. Uh, in order to defend against that, has to block. No question asked about that. Now there actually is a uh, the Suji here, which is Black's attachment. 
So now let, let's say that uh, if white just hardens, the black can actually extend. And if white tries to block, now, now we have this. Uh, if you just push, right, then we actually have a problem here because black can get into the corner. And now, when we clamp here, this is dead because capturing doesn't work for black, for white. So in order to avoid that, uh, white has to let black reduce. So now this is like much worse, right? Because white has much fewer points, and when black extends, you're really worried about that co in the future, right? If white just plays the Atari, then there could be a co, which is heavier for white than it is heavier. It is heavy for black. But if you fix that, black can now take the uh, initiative in the central fight. So the Han doesn't really work here. And white plays this, like a Hane there. So in order to defend the corner, because the algae is very bad in this case, right? White needs to block. Then black can take this down. White can still pursue after black. Because this is not entirely alive yet, so I can get a 9 first, which is very important because we're now aiming at the cutting point at N6. Now, if black plays this, I can still chase after black. So, this is not entirely alive yet. We can also uh, break this eye. And black uh, has to play kind of a sabaki move, what we commonly see, which is uh, S11. Now white can take the eye away. Notice how black still has one eye. So I can like still extend this. Not bad, right? So I'm talking about this entire group here. Nevertheless, it's still probably doable for both players. And uh, this is an extra move I missed. If uh, white plays here, right, if white just bumps, then we actually have a Tatsuji, which is to cut first and then Atari. Now we're in trouble because if white uh, connects, we can. Uh, pierce through, and now it's dead. The same thing with uh, connecting here. Black captures. Now white has to fight this co, but black has a lot of co threats. But that was always going to be a problem. So yeah, this could this could have been played. Yeah, all these shapes was good to Suji. So I so what I don't understand is sometimes I think professionals try too hard, like they're during this era, um, because they really are trying to push everything right. They fight as hard as they can. So now, black plays here, cuts directly, and white just fixes here, right? Black can extend and use this algae later. Because that's not too good. Because now. Black can possibly live, right? 
So that is some nasty stuff. So uh, actually, not that. This. All right, so black lives that way. But what Black didn't expect here was that White just directly played at p5 to fix that weakness. Maybe to do his extreme things, which they can do, yeah. So this is like the Huang Shi era, yeah. Uh, back then there was probably Huang Shi, Xu Xingyou, uh, and these two guys. So I think the four most famous uh, players. Yeah, the scoring has something to do with having a lot of separated groups. That's right. So the canton was very different. There wasn't anything like Comey back then. But this, this move is a nice move because uh, now it creates the cutting point at N6. Right, so if white gets to cut there, it would not be too nice. So white has to connect. Now white Ataris likes to extend. Uh, white blocks. It feels like uh, now this is too late because even though we already saw uh, that in action earlier in our discussion, yeah, most, mostly just fighty times, no framework. So it seems like uh, if you just play this way, then there's no, there's nothing happening, right? Because no matter what you do, this doesn't work. There actually is nothing. Keep in mind that that doesn't work. If you play here, Seems like it's dangerous, but white can actually just pull back and then you can maybe connect one more, but you still can't live in the corner. Same with this, right? So you still die. How does that work? Uh, you, the, the fewer separate groups you have, I think the more points you get. So yeah, like uh, back then it was really about just keeping our groups connected, something like that. So back now probes, right? Waiting for white to make a mistake. There's there's a there's a ton of magic here. If white Hona is, black can now clamp, right? Yeah, that's a very different way to play a game. So if black clamps, white connects, black can now extend this, white has to extend, right? Because you can't just let that nice stone get captured. And black is this. All of that is sente because white has extremely bad anti. So all of this is sente. Black connects, white has to connect there. What has to connect us here as well? Because if you notice, white is pretty short of liberties. Black can use that to live. So no matter what you do now, if you just play here, then black can still live. That's gonna be really bad for white because this this was white's turf, right? Originally, so white has to avoid that and play at R twelve. The black is here, Atari's. Well, we can just uh, connect. It's not a bad move though, because this Atari, if white just Atari's here, obviously we're gonna see a double Atari or something like this, right? Is that similar to the stone scoring? You end up with negative two points for each group since each needs two eyes. No, that's a little bit different, I think. 
Um, Chinese ancient scoring is it's uh is its own. But yeah, uh, back to the game. White connects. Now black is here. White connects. So this is leaving some agi in the corner at least, right? Because uh, black well black needs to needs to make this work. Because if you just play here, uh, white can tari. This is a very good co for white because as black you take it back, you have to take it back once more and then take it back once more. So it's a two step co, right? If you play here, white can actually make a connect and die situation because now if you try to connect your groups, your cells together, white can actually throw it in. And then now we have a problem, right? This is suddenly taking far to load. Now this is uh, what you should do. Which is uh, S3. So this is pretty much straightforward. White plays here, plays here. Has to Atari. Uh, S2 is a Tsuji. So I cannot really go and hit there. But black can also play it as two. So even though all of this is uh sente for white, the best you can do is to force a seki in the corner, right? So that really takes a lot of points away from white's corner. Look, look, uh, think about it like how much like how much white had earlier and how much he has now. So that's always a that's always um something to think about. But the only uh, thing that's keeping white, keeping black from playing it is is Gote, right? This invasion feels a little bit early, right? So if we play the Seki right now, white might just like extend that at nine, and now black is screwed over because he loses the initiative on the outside. So black has to play there. Uh, now white extends. Black really was putting much focus on the center, the central battle, right? Because you have, uh, you want to look at these stones, which are more important for black at this point. Maybe, for example, you want to cap there. I thought if uh, Christian Chinese had to fill in Odame, and so could not have Seki. You could have Seki. Yeah, you actually could have Seki. Uh, that was one of the rules. Yeah. But so so black playing at P eleven is really a pro because if white plays here, black can now play the uh, Seki right. Because if this happens, uh, all you end up with will be just bad shape. So you had to uh, fix that, and that the that would be Sente Seki for Black instead of Goti Seki, right? Same with here. You just play this. So uh, in the game, White saw that happening, so he went ahead uh, before Black did it, fixed the Aji, which I thought was pretty nice. So earlier in the game, White tried really hard. Uh, securing his right side, but now it seems like he's doing pretty well. So, what do you guys think? Uh, are you in favor of black or white right now? At the same time, let me just check OJ's chat. I mean, to sum up with, I think Black could have done more on the uh, right side, definitely, because there was a, a lot of Aji.
Alright. And that white style. Back in attack now, so back. Right, so it's it's not the end of the world for black yet, because you can still get this. And that's pretty large because uh not only that you save this stone, uh you now threaten to attack this in the future. So pretty large. But in the game, uh, White just... It seems like he doesn't really care much about the attack. Uh, he's in his own flow right now. Uh, this, in effect, was uh, one of Fantasy Fiend's best um, games, really, because he played really well in this game. And so did Shri Chan's Cat, but uh, this was one of his masterpieces, right? The reason for that is, you know, he played some like overplay moves early on, uh, he really got the flow going. For example, when he was faced with weak group, he didn't really back off. He just went ahead and uh, went for the Sabaki. So pretty good shape. At this point, uh, Black Peeps and White Connects, there really isn't a need for Black to wedge right now because this will happen. And why would we get a pretty nice shape? This is actually kind of a, a Sabaki idea. The black place here. Uh, he needs to still keep an eye on the white group. While focusing on M11, uh, right? Because it's, it's the center. So I think I really liked white at this point when I was reviewing this. Now, white plays a nice move here an attachment, like on ice. Now, uh, this is uh, another move in the sequence. White. Clamps. So we can't really reverse that though, because if you clamp right now, black can actually just, uh, push and connect. When you do this, black can cut right away. Because, uh, oh yeah, an L17. That's also weak group to consider. Now, if you're just Atari, notice how this doesn't work. Okay. So you have to do this. But now that's much better for uh, Black because he already has white split in half. So you'll uh, see those stones in trouble. Actually, that's the wrong one gone. Okay. So yeah, that's going to be a problem. Which is why in the game, White did this first. Now, black pushed here, but in effect, this allowed white to get a very nice shape. See the difference there? Because uh, if black had just connected, white might consider the, the light move at L5, but black still has A or B, right? So he still has ways to... I got a hair on my glasses. Actually, I need to clean my glasses real quick. Anyway. Like the function in OGS reviews. So, uh, black pushes in the game. You might say that it's not that different, but uh, now black needs to extend, right? So that was a problem. Now white puts pressure on black. If black plays this right now, it seems like he can cut 
wide apart, but when the Atari's Y connects, Y uh, extends by the Atari's, uh, white's really gonna be black in a pretty bad shape, right? So black has to play here first in order to uh, secure his uh, place on the bottom side, really. At this point, if you look at the board right now, like if you, uh, white already has a pretty huge corner. And he's not lagging behind anywhere else. So he's already, you can almost say that he's in the lead because he's got a pretty nice shape. Right? Over here. This is pretty, the flow is here is amazing. But in the game, he played one more nice move, which was uh, O2. So Black just, Hana is here, right? What can get outside? And that was the idea. Uh, if you are going to respond with like an outside Hane, what usually ends up is your opponent gets super nice outside. In that case, White's got Black really cramped on the inside. If Black plays at L4, White can still extend at K5. So, uh, if black continues, white has a really nice move here. So if you uh, block, white can actually get this, right? The Hane. Uh, that doesn't work for black. So you almost have to uh, make sure that you get the stone at L2 captured. Because of that one single pro, white is now much stronger on the outside, right? Same with this, if black just Hanes, uh, white can get a nice outside. So we're looking at either A or B. We can get at least one of them, right? So white really had a nice flow with his groove. Now we are down to our second last option, which is I mean I mean surely you can't like play here, right? That'd be too bad. That shouldn't be even considered. Uh, if you uh, Hane here, black can jump. Uh, I mean, white can jump, right? Black can take the stone, but this is what I want, right? Because he already has a very nice outside. So using that uh, probe, white already limited black inside his area. The game though, black played here, peeped first, really wanted to attack. And then when black plays here, bam. This is not a suji. So these two moves at L2 and J5 are really just amazing moves. Let me go back and elaborate the role of this white move a little bit because uh, it seems like it's just out of the random. Like, um, if you could just not ignore that, like if you if you take that away and take that away, wouldn't wouldn't that be the same though? The answer to that is if you. If you really try to like attach here, right? Because uh, like normally, if you uh, let's see, uh, if you just play even before that, right? If you simply play the jump, black can peep first, and then uh, without that exchange, 
that I can attach, right? So what Han is now? Uh, white can Hane, black cuts. So this happens, right? Uh, white has to live. Then we cut first. But black's real focus here was the uh, center because once he lives this bottom group, he can really go for center. This is a dragon, so he doesn't worry about like the side. He can block, right? White might capture this, but now we have a weak shape in center. So that was the problem. If you hunt it from the other side, then black can actually peep here first. If white connects, then uh, black can cleverly cut white apart. So the, the order here is important. You peep first, make white heavy, and then pull back. So now this cuts the two groups apart. If you play here though, which seems like the Suji, not gonna lie. Um, but I can still cut. So this is the other way around. White might live, but now you what you essentially have is A and B, so you can either play here or play there. Uh, you're gonna be left with really bad shape, right? The point of white playing this though is if you play, if you I played this already, and then you come back now. Notice how uh, the only difference between this sequence and the other sequence was just one move, like or one uh, ex exchange really. So what happens if you try try to kill white uh, to kill white now? Yeah, it's black. If you attach. Right? Because of that stone, right? It's just like you got a free move here. Uh, white play here, black play here. So now you can do this. And why is that? Because uh, now black plays here, and then plays here, white can live, right? This is much better. If you try to kill white, this is actually much more complicated. I definitely looked up pro commentaries when pre preparing this. Uh, you can actually disconnect. Now all of this is thrown into a huge fight. White tries to live. Black tries to cut white apart. But if you really notice, there's a nice move here, which involves F3. So if you just Atari there, then this is what it wants. This is perfect shape, right? In order to go for the kill, Black has to play the strongest move possible. Now, white plays here. Black has to. Connect, white pushes, blood blocks. So white already can live the bottom group. Now it's all down to the semi eye or the fight, uh, the caption race between uh, black and white. So if we just count liberties like that, what will happen is white can play at N5. And it seems like it's uh, Seki, right? Because like this is Seki. But first of all, white it's uh, had Sente, so it's Sente Seki. And second, is that actually not because uh, you can Atari at J seven, which is a super nice move, because if Black captures, you can now play at H seven. 
So black and X. Same thing here. So if black dies, it's game over, right? But it's, it's astonishing how much just deviated from that one probe. Because we're when we go back to the previous one, this was a move with extremely nice planning. In fact, it was probably one of the best probing moves you ever w wish to see. And by the way, this is uh, for those of you who are confused, uh, who just like came in here to watch what is going on. This is Fridays with X Eight Ninety Eight. We're doing a lecture right now. This is a, a, a Chinese classic game between uh, Fancy Game and Shizhou Xiao, right? And if you're new, please don't hesitate to follow and subscribe. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions so far? Oh, good night. We have about half an hour left. But yeah, the the brilliance of this move is amazing, right? Because you say the name so fast, I feel like I'm the foreigner. So this is a very nice move once again because Black doesn't have nice uh, replies. Dude, fire just followed. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're also new, please also follow. So, if Black pushes through here, which is he did in the game, White can actually Hane, right? Black has to Hane, he has to fight. This is another nice move, even though it seems like weights and pieces, he actually is not, because if Black, uh, actually, no. If Black tries to cut, right? White plays here, Black plays here. Now if you just Hattari, then this actually doesn't work because uh, you don't have enough liberties to support that. But what is special about this move is uh, White can just save that exchange for later because now he can play a J2, that's important. If black plays here, white can immediately pull the stone out, and then this is this is gonna be uh, necessary, right? So now white has more liberties. If you count this, then uh, he actually has one more because black plays this, plays this. Now we have one more liberty. If you play here, to, in order to prevent white from uh, extending a J2, white can get this first. Now, first of all, it's a nicer shape. Uh, second, because white has the Atari here, if you uh, extend, then this is actually going to be problematic. Black is going to die. The entire dragon is going to die. So. In order to not die, black has to allow white to connect. And that's painful. So, in, in other words, black has no choice but to connect. And that is amazing because uh, the level of uh, long-term planning uh, Fancy you can show in this game is really extraordinary, right? And what does this tell us? First of all, you're going to use all of the Aji, you're going to save things for later. Uh, Black missed his chance to uh, do that, right, in the, in the white corner. He could have done exactly the same to uh, prevent white from getting such a large corner. But not right now it is white who used all the Aji. So white can connect now. 
and this Atari works very well. What is building that momentum? Because this works against Black. He's hurting himself, but he has to do it. Black still tries to fight. When Black tries to do this, right, he's really looking for something like that. Well, maybe, uh, not that, because there will be too much sacrifice. But maybe just looking for something like this. Yeah. But what I'm trying to get at is, in the game, White plays here. And that's different. So that prevents Black from uh, really exploiting that plan. Because now White has this move. If you just push through and uh, let White get all those stones, you might be able to kill the center, but White also has control over this now. Right, so we have... This is a huge trade. You can kind of see how much larger uh, White has compared to Black. So, Black Ataris has to do it. So, why can uh, now Atari again? This works exactly for, uh, like its plan, right? The flow here is amazing because White can now just use that momentum to capture those stones. So, right now, let's suppose that. Black plays here. Now, why just need to be careful? Because uh, there can still be danger. Because if you just extend, now why is actually not entirely alive, right? Same with this though. Uh, white can still get a very nice settlement, even though Black can get K two. Uh, white. Can play at d3, which cross into the corner. So this is kind of like a minimum defeat for Black, because uh, after all that battle, White's got a huge corner and this, right? He's got those three stones captured. He's got this. He's got. He's uh. He has this corner now. So Black has not enough territory. Clearly, Black has to fight to keep the pressure on, but. White pulling this stone back is Sente because it threatens the life and death of Black. So Black can pull back. So now White jumps out. So this group below is clearly alive because Black and uh, White already has K2, which is both uh, territorially big and uh, Huge in the context of the game because White's alive now we can attack Black. So any questions so far? Uh, what do you guys think about this game? Any 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 moves you didn't understand is is uh, definitely okay because I usually spent hours and hours preparing this game. When I play against Rukasu, I just like I just uh, Yolo really like I just play the most fun variation possible. So, and your thoughts on this? And uh, anyways, uh, if you're also new, please feel free to follow. <laughs> okay, no questions? Fine. <laughs> So now white pushes. Now this is actually a really severe move because if black directly blocks, white can cut. So uh, keep in mind that there are actually no problems here with white shape. Like no matter what you do, right? So th that's gonna be really hard to respond to. Which is why black has to connect here and then keep his stones together. Now, white pushes through. Once again, if black uh, just pushes at e7, white can hane. So, uh, 
or maybe not, or maybe that too, right? Wicked Hane. So tough for Black to get out. So Black has to fight at this point. Notice how Xu Zhangxia, even though he was behind, didn't give up. Like at this point, he was clearly at, an, at a disadvantageous position, but he still kept fighting. And that to me is quite amazing how he just uh, kept trying. Like for example, he's split into different groups here, but uh, he still kept this game like a fighty game. So Barf is a C3. Now, White, once again, has amazing flow because uh, what you learn from this game is really you're trying to work your uh, work with your other stones together to create a nice momentum. And this is what White's doing, right? Because he's pushing Black against uh, White's own weakness. Uh, not weakness, but uh, strength, rather, I should say. So Black has no choice but to get an, uh, form an anti triangle, right? Now I can connect. Black Hounds, which is Sente. Now he lives this. You can still say that Black uh, is trying hard to win this game. Run down the water. So wife is here, right? Still keeping the pressure on. It's amazing to me how Francis Green didn't just back off when he was in front. Because what he was really aiming at, I think, was not only uh, this group over here, but also that one. Because it's not uh, completely alive yet. You can't really attack this now, but there's still potential. We're here. So, uh, wait. Reduces Black's eye shape first. Black is also trying to not let White live easily. But White probably here is a nice move again. Everything is working for him. So Black blocks. Uh, if White just plays here, uh, there can be a co, as you can see. So it's kind of like a two-step code for white because black is one more liberty on the outside. Maybe white won't win this code now because he doesn't have enough code threats yet, but that's a possibility. He will leave that for later. So uh, this is the process of creating an Achi, really. So black, uh, white attaches. If black just plays at uh, like here, right? Then that's too much. Uh, black won't be able to find enough territory because this is like not clean yet. That's technically a co. White has so much here. White has so much in the corner. Also on the left side. So black has to fight, right? As hard as he could. And white wedges. The two players start another fight. Black Hanes. Once again, using the flow. If you uh, if you just play here, then that's actually not so optimal because uh, now black can play here. Or for example, just play this. That's possible too. So if you capture black captures, now you're left with A, right? So the wedge. So white gives up the stone to make that sente. And then throws in again to make sure that black has fewer liberties. And now connect. 
So this is a very nice uh, momentum sequence. So I wait once again. The black can probably ignore that because uh, there's A, there's also B, right? So black isn't worried about like living. But white's not thinking about killing black either because if white just does that, then what will happen is black can cut, white will take away the eye. This, uh, and this will be a complicated situation. Maybe uh, white can still play this because if you just like, uh, there's, th there's gonna be code because if you connect, that's not, not working, right? Black is this, uh, white can also do that. So the connection is available. And you want to fix the corner, black must play at B1. Now, if you cut, white can actually live at A6. That's even better, right? And plus, you, you have like this uh, central group, this black dragon. That's painful. So black has to fight because if he just jump out, jumps out, then white can connect. Uh, no matter how hard blacks try, black tries in the in the uh, center, white can escape. So that's not that's not really much help, right? So black has to snatch some snatch some territory here. And ignore the center. Is that my, is that anybody still watching here? Are you guys just like all in shock or something? <laughs> Lol. So uh, black has to fight, right? As far as hard as he could. Now white actually does have to be careful because if white Ataris, then uh, black extends. Uh, white would need to get this right. So if black, well, if black Ataris is easy because uh, one can just cut apart, right? Cut black apart. Um, if black is here though. Uh, captures, uh, white plays this, black pushes, white cuts, black cuts now. White might also be able to manage, right? So it's not that bad. The game that white just played here, maybe uh, Fancy King thought he was like winning by far already. So he just played this and then played the Atari. So this is like when similar to when you're winning, you you make it harder and harder for your opponent. In this case, Spanish is not backing away because now white uh, black must play this, must fight. Now the reason he's still fighting is you have those stones, and this group is not entirely alive yet. So that's what you're fighting for. But it, when white Hanes, uh black does have an option to continue, right? To do to, to be a tough guy. So uh, black has a part. Everything is in pieces, right? Now white Ataris maybe gives it a le top left corner. It focuses on getting this. So according to the pro opinion, this move at L16 is a nice liberty extending move. So now you can still probably win the capturing race. And come back to the uh, corner even. 
not the other way around, because if you try to make things happen there, then uh, we might see a shortage in, of liberties. Now white only has four, and black has one, two, three, four, five, and it's really difficult to find a, another one, right? So white was vigilant. Oh, well, that's probably gonna happen. So black red is out. He didn't think it was possible. Just play here, right? Extended. Black has no choice but to cut white off, obviously. Uh, now white plays another uh, kind of thick move here because uh, the kind of the the global sensitive board. Defense he has allows him to just regard those two stones as large and even, maybe even give up that entire group because it's just a, a string of stones anyway. But if you look at this area, it's actually as as large as that, which is hard to imagine, right? This is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's about like 30 to 40 points, right? But this is also like close to 40 points. If you get all of that, uh, if you get like B15, then all this corner is yours, all the side is yours. So black tries to kill. Now white plays here. Yes, further securing his uh, winning position, right? And black, uh, black plays here, tries to kill. What then? What we end up with is something like this, right? So it's a seki. So black has to try to uh, reduce liberties this way. Now, if you play this. That's not an eye anymore, right? So this is a good technique by, by Black. However, uh, White already saw this happening, so when uh, Black played this, White just allowed it to happen. Like, says, you know what, let's trade, right? So White takes the corner, Black takes uh, the string of White stones over here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's about 30 points, but he just gave it up for the corner and also the side, right? And I think that would, that is what we're studying for today. Uh, the sense of the global sense of the board and the ability to use Agi. For example, uh, if we look at this black dragon, it's actually, it's actually not entirely alive yet, right? If black tries to push now, it might seem like this is complicated fighting, but white can first of all connect over there, and if black tries to split white, then white can block, black cuts, white Ataris, white now Ataris, right? So black is actually dead. This does not work. Or just simply that, actually, yeah. So, black plays here, uh, white hanes. You can kind of see that uh, Fancy Ping is not letting loose, even though he was winning at this point. And black couldn't start his code, because if he started his code, uh, then uh, white has too many code threats, which is the problem. So black plays here. White takes the code first. Now we have a co fight. But this is in white's uh, initiative. Because uh, whenever if white takes, then it's huge, right? So black and white use the, the co threats. But when black plays here, white can take. So let's go back a few moves. So all of this is white's local code, right? 
If Blackface here, it might also seem like it's a local code threat, but White can actually take the code. Uh, Black is, seems like he's going to kill the corner, but White can ensure that he has a nice connection here. Uh, the White move at T7 is the Tsuji, which allows uh, him to cut this off because if Black just connects here, this is back again. This is White's again. So Black has to uh, con kill off those two stones in order to live. Then we can capture this now. And make the Hane, right? So in this case, White's already winning by a lot. So the flow, uh, Francis Wing demonstrated here, was amazing. Black still tried to fight, which is good. Uh, this is a very strong move by Black. So uh, it's trying to lift the uh, Top right corner, but in this case, uh, when you're winning, you have a chance to show your relentless, relentlessness. That's the word. The black face here, you can actually haunt it, uh, wedge. So black, if black face here. This is obviously it doesn't work, right? But if you just play this, then I can also make it pretty hard for you. In fact, I don't think uh, I don't think Black will win the caption race. No, he's actually behind the one liberty. So they had to fight. This is another co. And. White plays here, White plays here. You can just kind of see that how by giving up those stones, Fancy Bing established a whole new level of leading, right? So White plays here, Black plays a T5. A co threat. Another co threat. A white Hanais. This is the last co threat Black has. But once again, there's a trade. White kills the entire Black top right. But Black can't kill White's top left. He can only reduce the points, take the points back. So that was pretty much what happened in this game. We saw a lot of trades. We saw a lot of uh, the use of the Aji. And uh, there was also sacrificial play. It's kind of a mix of everything. And if you come back, uh, I mean, White won by quite a bit, right? In the, in the game, uh, I think he actually won by 15 points. But I think it's probably stones. So maybe he won by like, yeah, he won by quite a fair margin. But if you go if you go back here, this was the move, right? These two moves were the deciding factor, and they just kind of demonstrated how to use Aji at a at a very very top level. And even though none of us could maybe read that far. Uh, this is beautiful, and it just shows you how much one sing one simple move can change the entire board situation, right? And uh, do you guys have any questions? Do you guys think it was a good game? Because to me, it's amazing how uh, Fancy King just showed his composure uh, when there was pressure on him. When he was faced with a bunch of weak groups, he just like walked through, like there was no, there was no big deal. And this was old style, exactly old fighting style. 
this was vintage fighting, right? And actually, uh, eventually in Jivango, uh, Fancy Pian and Shishan had uh, divided the 10 games like 5-5, five, five, so they each won 5 games. So it was, it was, it was kind of fun. And we have to admire that these two uh, very strong players, just like the Guli and Lisa of the Qing Dynasty, had left us uh, such a fortune of ancient games. I don't think uh, the modern professional will agree with every single one of their moves, but it's you, you still gotta admit it's pretty amazing. The level, the the sense of of, of the board as a whole really uh, really struck me. I think. Anyways, we're gonna leave you guys with those two uh, Tsujis, super Tsujis actually. Uh, this is what Fancy Dino is remembered for, this, this game, right? So, anyway, thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you guys had a lot of fun today. And I will see you guys next week.